Hello lovely people. The time has come. Let's open this big black box. Yesterday after I unboxed the whole package that came from uh, Hong Kong, huge shout out to Frank from Hapa King. He supplied all this gear for me to review and have a look. Thank you very much Frank. After yesterday's video, I put a poll online uh, asking people what they want to see first and most of them want to start with the dessert, with the Alpine status. So we're going to open this box, we're going to have a look what's inside and I'm going to tell my impressions, my opinions about it. It's going to be a deep dive into Alpine status. So first of all, let's talk about Alpine status. The whole status line is based on this yellow sticker and we are going to ignore it altogether because for us it doesn't matter and this is is it a marketing scheme is it a gimmick i don't know it's up to you to decide i personally don't care about the sticker i care about what's inside and is it good or not don't confuse this with alpine status f1 the alpine status f1 is the best that alpine can offer at the moment and it always was and it's always was based on the highest possible reproduction of current standards or whatever at this day and age it's a studio with one 92k and 32 bits and they're kind of going into that bandwagon and trying to make all the gear able to reproduce everything and this particular speaker set is advertised at highest res and it can play up to 40 kilohertz if you need that if you can hear it some people say you cannot hear it but you can feel it well it's it's debatable it's up to you to decide this alpine status is one tier down from status f1 and after that you have previous x line the new r line and all the other speakers so this is kind of a cream of the crop of what alpine can offer what is the target market for this and what is the competition these retail for a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars well 9.99 if you want to be exact and for the same price you have Hertz Milli Pros uh, you have Focal Flex Evo. How do they compare to that? I won't be able to compare them because I don't have the others. However, I had Hertz Milli Pros two-way, not a three-way set. So I think without any further ado, let's open this box and see what's inside. Just a heads up, this is the first unboxing that I'm doing just because I never ever had anything brand new. All that I bought was secondhand and everything was packed in like Tesco's bags and cardboard boxes. So I never opened anything so pretty. What I like, it is the black box, black packaging and the foam, the styrofoam inside is black as well. So we have warranty, owner's manual. So we have everything listed that's supposed to be in the box. Same manual for the 653 and 65C. Actually, let's very quickly go through this. This is a three-way set with six and a half mid-base, three and a half mid-range, and ring radiator tweeter. We're gonna talk about this later. The Alpine status line comes in a few different flavors. So you have two-way component set that comes exactly the same, just without the mid-ranges. So same tweeters and same mid-base. Then you have a slim line which has a bit shallower mid base drivers and smaller tweeters and uh, we have coax drivers as well but this is i don't want to say the best line but the most comprehensive the biggest drivers the biggest tweeters i want to check them out it's supposed to have these passive crossovers in the manual manual is exactly the same because in two-way component set as i mentioned they're exactly the same drivers so we have drivers grills some screws and some other stuff any other information, any good information, crossovers. So you can see the passive crossovers. We will be talking about passive crossovers as well. And I will be making a separate video though of passive crossovers because everybody ignores them, but they're kind of cool. The only difference is the crossovers. So one is three-way crossover, the other one is two-way crossover. And in the specifications, if you can see, there's not much to be honest. There's no real information here listed. You have only the sizes, 100 watts RMS, four ohms, eight ADB sensitivity, this, we can ignore it and that's it no tiers parameters whatsoever in the next video when we're gonna dive deep into all the technical stuff for these speakers then we will have a look at the TS parameters and everything else very nice styrofoam packaged very nicely and we have two mid base two mid range two tweeters and crossovers 
I'm gonna pull this out. Let's pull out the crossovers first because they're gonna drop inside the box. And I'm gonna pull this out because at the bottom of the box here, we have some grills. So let's have a look at the grills first, maybe. A six and a half inch grill with regular mesh. Very nice Alpine logo. We have for their mid range, exactly the same. Then we have screws, and these screws, I was a little bit surprised. This set, as I mentioned, cost a thousand pounds, and the screws are just regular poser screws. I was expecting maybe nicer looking screws, I guess, I don't know. And these are the rings for the tweeters. For now, I'm gonna take just one each. Let's move the box out of the way. Now, the beautiful stuff, the speakers themselves. So let's unpack everything and have a look in a bit more detail. And there we go. So I zoomed in a bit so we can see a little bit better. First impressions, I haven't seen anything more beautiful than these speakers. Just have a look at this. How is this not one of the most beautiful things you've ever saw? This is just amazing. Let's start probably with a mid-base driver. So Alpine status in their specs, they're listing that the cone material for all the drivers is the same, which is carbon composite. Carbon, it's basically woven carbon fiber. And you can see all the carbon fiber is like woven. It looks very, very cool. From inside, you cannot see really much. Yeah, you cannot see much. Another thing that pops into your eye straight away is a surround, which looks very, very weird. Now, this surround, Alpine is kind of famous for weird surrounds. Well, when it started the X-Line, it introduced the hammer surround. I don't know how it's pronounced, I'm pronouncing it hammer surround. It's like with all the ridges. And again, I'm planning to do another separate video about different surrounds, comparing the hammer surround, comparing this one with the regular surround. So regular surround looks like this, it's just a normal regular surround. And this one, it's very difficult to explain pop it out see it looks like this let me try to show you what is happening with the surround by illustrating it because it's gonna be much easier than showing on the video so if you imagine uh, again excuse me my drawing skills that's gonna be the cone and that's gonna be the basket yeah? regular surround it would be just like this yeah that's a surround and it goes up and down this surround is going to be the basket that's a cone so from the cut view from the side view it looks something like this it's like it's going up and going down and basically what's happening when you push the cone up or down the surround moves it doesn't really stretch but it moves and if it needs to stretch then it stretches here and here these angles and it kind of moves and shifts let me try to show you so like look look at this part push the cone see how it moves So by the looks of it, how it moves up and down, it doesn't look like the surround is stretching itself. It looks like it's just moving very nicely and it would allow for a lot of excursion. Now, these drivers, they're stiff. We will have a look at the TS specs in the next video when we're gonna do a proper, but the mid-base driver, it looks very stiff compared to others. Mid-range as well, it looks to have a very stiff suspension. So I guess they can eat a lot of power there 
rated 100 RMS, these mid ranges a bit less, but all the drivers have a face plug and it is a bit, I don't want to say weird and unnecessary because I would imagine Alpine knows what he's doing, but the fact is that they're using both of these mid base drivers for a two-way set and for a three-way set. So for a two-way set, having a face plug is useful and kind of necessary because it allows for a better dispersion. So if you have your mid base driver in the door, like off axis, it will have basically off axis, it can play a bit higher. However, in a three-way set, uh, it's not really necessary because you're not gonna play them high. However, if they're making only one driver for both sets, it kind of would make sense to make just one instead of having two different drivers. However, the downside of a face plug is that the cone area is smaller because this, it's fixed, it's not moving, yeah? It is fixed to the motor assembly and you have less cone because the dust cap in a normal speaker dust cap counts as together with a cone but with this one it doesn't so in theory you have less cone area another thing that i noticed as well i don't know if you will be able to see this cone is kind of curved it's not it's not flat like for example i'm going to show you this this cone is just flat yeah it goes like this however this one or this one is kind of curved it's not very flat so that is a difference i don't know how big of a difference it is uh, makes in the response but it's just one thing to notice the surround itself it's not that stiff it's kind of soft ish however the spider is very very stiff maybe because it's a brand new driver it's not been running yet i will be checking it after like breaking but for now it looks like a very stiff spider the coil itself is kind of big no idea how big it is but it's it's bigger for sure compared to like sb acoustics big coil would mean mean a big power handling directed 100 watts however one thing that is slightly concerning for me personally is the power handling itself it is rated for 100 watts now let's have a look at this one this is sb acoustics sb 17 that is rated for what, 60 watts i think 60 yeah i think 60 watts one thing that i want to note for the cooling of the motor. RMS value of the power handling is the thermal. So that means how much heat the driver can shed. Now have a look at this one. It has a bare motor, so it can dissipate heat fast. It has a pole vent, which can expel hot air as well. As well, you have holes in the coil to expel heat and it's open. Now have a look at the status. The motor is totally closed. There's absolutely no way for the motor to cool down. I don't know how the status drivers are shedding heat because they can soak up everything unless they have some kind of proprietary cooling method, same like some JL motors. I think 13W7 has patented ways how to shed heat from the motor. Maybe the status has as well. The only way how it can shed heat is through this gap. Other way, there's no pole vent, no nothing. I don't know how it cools down, to be honest. I'm a bit, I don't want to say worried about this, but surprised, more like surprised. Now the driver itself, the basket is made from cast aluminum or aluminium, however you want to say. That's metal. The back, this feels like metal. However, this part feels like plastic so it has a plastic covering very similar to when i bought the alpine type x subwoofer it had like a rubber mount on the motor as well why question is why so if you think like if you have a look at these drivers which one looks better obviously this one yeah this because like you have bare motor you have ferrite magnet it doesn't look that pleasing so obviously this was done for cosmetic reasons i don't think it is anything functional it's just for cosmetics reasons however again as i mentioned very little gap especially if you fit it like like this there's very little gap for any air to escape because you can see the motor takes a lot of space. I'm not sure about the cooling stuff. The terminals are regular spade connectors, bigger and smaller one. I love these, the same like on the SB Acoustics. And there's a logo. So this grill that comes with a set pops on top. The only recess is here where you have the logo here. So if you align it, logo, logo, you can still see the logo. And one thing is this grill comes on flush with the driver it's not it, it doesn't sit on top 
it comes flush with the driver. So that means that this driver, you cannot flush mount it. If you flush mount it, like in a baffle like this, you won't be able to put this grill on unless you're gonna leave a gap, like in the door or something, you're gonna leave a gap like this, then you can put this grill on. If you mount it like this on top of the baffle, not flush mount, then you will be able to use this grill like this. And this grill, it looks pretty. Another thing to note is that the mounting is on four bolts only. Some drivers have six bolts. This has four bolts. I was working with the peerless drivers that have six bolts and the other driver, the DP series has six bolts as well, but this one has only four bolts. So what's something to mention? Let's have a look at the dimensions. Dimensions wise, it's a typical six and a half inch driver. So 17 centimeters, six and a half inches for my uh, American friends. Depth wise, everything is in the manual about three inches. The cone itself is like four and a half inches, which is like 11 and a half centimeters. But the thing is, it looks pretty. It looks really, really pretty. Now, what I'm thinking about this, if I'm going to put it in my car, if you know my car has infinite baffle mid-base drivers, and I'm not sure how good with this gap with the face plug would be for infinite baffle. I wouldn't want to risk it. Then I would want to mount them to have the cone facing the cabin just for safety reasons and put a grill because the grill is there okay mid bay driver let's have a look at the mid range the mid range is three and a half inch and again exactly the same cone material exactly the same surround it feels a bit stiff and it has a face plug as well face plug again for off axis response now one thing to note this face plug like this you can see it is protruding from this so you cannot put because like the surround itself is kind of a flush but this one is protruding here yeah? if you put a grill on it just like that it looks like this so it's very nice the grill itself it has two little tabs here and and the basket has two little holes so these holes you align it with the tabs and it snaps into place one thing for the mid-range what i like is this aluminium chamfer so it is like a 45 degree little chamfer that is shiny and even like if you have it like this you can see it's shining even if you put the grill on the grill sits on top it's not the same like for the mid base driver it sits on top and it's slightly smaller than the basket itself and with the grill on you can still see that chamfer and that bling and it looks very very cool so this mid-range has a neodymium motor it's not a ferrite so it is a much smaller it's very light yeah in in hands it has quite a lot of breathing space so it is fine same terminals exactly the same and same back with no hole bend no nothing but in in general very very pretty driver i love how it looks like now let's have a look at the tweeter so the tweeter is a ring radiator tweeter it's not a dome tweeter it is huge it's massive it's slight but it's massive if you compare it with the mid-range it's almost the same size as the mid-range driver which is ridiculous however this is a special type of tweeter let me show you dome tweeter is like it has a dome this is an sb acoustics sb29 so it's the same ring radiator it's a tweeter that I have now in my car. As you can see, cone is not a dome. The central point is fixed and is not moving. And this ring actually makes that actual sound. And because I'm showing you this because you cannot really see inside of this tweeter because it's covered with a grill and you cannot take the grill off. You can see the material is exactly the same, the woven carbon fiber. And you can see it kind of goes, scoops out. And then it has this face plug. I will be talking Talking about the benefits and downsides of ring radiators in an upcoming video when I will be comparing dome tweeters with ring radiator tweeters and we might make some measurements as well. However, this Alpine has done a few tweeters like this in this way with ring radiators. I think the previous F1 tweeters have the ones that were made by Scanspeak, they were ring radiators as well with a little spike in, in the very middle. But here as well, you can see, I'm gonna go very, very close. Yeah, you can see the face plug and you can see it's almost looks like a cone but it goes all the way the ring so you cannot disassemble it you cannot do anything else it mounts like this flush mount the one thing it has it has this ring that comes from the back and screws on and you can if you have like a small baffle like aluminium or whatever you can tighten it up and make it like this these terminals these are regular screw terminals that you can find on amplifiers and stuff. I rarely see them on, on speaker drivers, but it's nice because it is a solid connection. If you put like a fork terminal on it, it's going to be a very, very solid connection. Yeah, 
please do not throw it in the bin. It's a very good tweet. And finally, let's have a look at the passive crossover network. So it is kind of a big thing, to be honest. What well, seven inches wide, seven by five. It is kind of a big thing. Okay, like this and inside I will be doing a separate video about these passive crossovers because what I've done I already uh, have the schematics for it I know where things are going what the components are the few things that I would like to mention is that this is I want to say a highly adjustable crossover because with this jumper you can choose woofer crossover to be either 6 dB or 12 dB without the jumper the signal goes only through this coil and it's a 6 dB slope if you had that jumper it adds this capacitor as well and then it becomes a 12 dB slope. It has a jumper for the mid-range as well. The only thing that this does, it bypasses this resistor and basically the resistor knocks the response down by 3 dB or if you have it plugged in, it bypasses it and you have like plus 3 dB. And for the tweeter circuit, it's, it's very cool what they did. So it has three capacitors and what they do in combination with resistor, you can change this jumper to have plus 3 dB 0 dB and minus 3 dB and what it does every jumper position goes through a different capacitor and different resistor and it brings the tweeter level down but it brings the tweeter level down not only by changing the crossover frequency but the actual level so I will show you in the future when I'm going to be doing the video but this is kind of cool and I'm surprised about the weight because this weighs a ton and I would imagine this coil alone would cost about like 10-15 pounds these capacitors i looked them up and they cost like a pound each so if you imagine 10 3 maybe another 5 so that's like 20 20 25 pounds for crossover alone times 2 is like 50 pounds only for the crossovers now everybody's going to be dismissing ah oh, why do you need the crossovers blah 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 but the thing is especially like in far east people like to use passive crossovers because you don't need really amplification channels you need only one channel of amplification per side to run the whole three-way of course you're losing the possibility to adjust the crossovers or like do the timing and everything but th this is a talk for uh, another video for now I just want to show you how these crossovers look they're kind of big kind of the same size of the woofer but they're very cool they're high quality you can see that they're high quality air core inductors this I think has a ferrat inside but this is an air core inductor very good caps not electrolytic electrolytic only on the woofer and mid-range circuit but on the tweeter you have these poly caps I think they're called poly caps and one thing as well that I'm noticed these PTC so these PTC acts as a fuse for the tweeter and for the mid-range circuit if you like overdrive them in instead of burning your tweeter this is gonna just shut off the tweeter circuit and it's gonna stop working and after a while when it's gonna cool down it's gonna be working again so it's kind of thermal protection and it's it's a cool thing I think that they did with this now I guess the main question is is it worth a thousand pounds or a thousand dollars and in my personal opinion yes I never seen in my life a more beautiful speaker than this I like, can you know those purified drivers that have weird surround this looks very similar and the whole visual impact that you have from these drivers is something out of this world is ju just for me I don't know the crossover components prove that as well it's a high quality product top of the line top of the range using premium materials however how is the performance of it I don't know that's what we're gonna check next so the next upcoming videos we will be checking everything that has to do with performance TS parameters sweeps distortion measurements on axis off axis response we will be checking the crossovers as well we'll be checking all of that we'll be installing them in my car and tuning and doing everything that we're supposed to do with these speakers but for now this was the unboxing and review and my impressions of Alpine status HDZ 6x3 three-way component set so thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you in the next one.